If I had one wish, I would wish for the energy to go through this workout today because it's one of those days. We finished off a nice deload week in which I did no training except for like one day of just very light, simple, full body training. And I mean, it was very light, like something you would do before a bodybuilding competition. Uh, and because of that, I think I've fallen into a complete state of relaxation. So now, today is Monday and I gotta get back to the grind, heavy squatting today. In fact, heavy squatting and high volume. So we're doing, I have the program up right here, we're doing 355 for four sets of six today on the squats. And then we have to do two sets of heavy deadlifts. Uh, so, you know, normally when squat day's up, I'm like, hey, training time, I can picture the weight right on my back and everything. Uh, but I think because I've taken a full week off, I've fallen into such a relaxed state that like I can't even picture having 135 on my back right now. <laughs> so we're going to have to snap right out of that when we step into the gym today, get our mind right. Because honestly, as long as you are physically capable of performing the movements, there is absolutely no excuse for you to not train. All right, your muscle's still there, your strength's still there. So I don't care how bad of a day it is, how tired you are, there's never an excuse to not train. You can physically do it, so we're going to do it. So to give you guys an example of what my program looks like, I'm still using Johnny Candido's six-week program. However, we're making modifications to it and some changes this time around. Uh, Today is going to stick pretty close to the program, but as you guys can see, ooh, let me just uh, adjust this camera right here. All right, as you guys can see, boom. This is what the first week looks like. Uh, this Excel program, you put in your numbers, your one rep maxes, and it calculates everything out for you. So it calculates the weight you have to do for how many sets and reps. So today, 355 on squats, four sets, six reps, and then two sets of six on deadlifts, 400 pounds each, uh, which isn't too bad. Gonna work on technique. I think not on this week per se, because he has some pretty heavy weight and high volume. As you can see, Friday, we're supposed to do uh, four sets of eight on squats. So I won't mess with it this week, but uh, later on in this week, I may actually switch to like a 5x5 five five program for deadlifts to really attack them more aggressively because I need to get my sumo strength way up. Also, my chest days, my bench press days are much different. They're actually, I'm not even following the program anymore. Johnny gave me a separate regimen to follow rep-wise, and then I, I'm actually adding in some uh, new things this cycle, some new exercises that aren't even on Johnny's program that I got from another powerlifter to help break past that bench plateau. And as you guys can see... The big uh, clothing line closet is wide open because I actually just finished going through today's orders. I got this box filled up right now. So I appreciate everybody supporting with the clothing guys. It means a ton to me. That's nwblifestyle.com. The link is always in the info box if you want to get yourself some clothing. It is the hugest show of support and I appreciate it more than you would ever know. It helps me support uh, my boy Teddy and I. Oh, that moment when you realize and remember that you have left over hibachi for your post-workout gains, gains in the styrofoam. Hibachi grilling is amazing. That is the steak, rice, lo mein, and vegetables, hibachi. Ooh, some ginger sauce on it. Lord! Everybody's asking, Nick, are you still on that cut? Like, what's going on? Uh, currently maintaining. Did not go back up. I'm still at 185. And my heaviest, of course, I was like 193. So I stayed and I'm maintaining. And, I mean, I'm still going to slowly, slowly taper down, but to be completely honest with you guys, I don't want to get too, too light uh, for the sake of continuing to grow strength. So, my plan is to compete in the 181 powerlifting class. I'm around 185 right now. If I can hang around that 185, slowly taper down to 181, I'll be able to continue growing strength and keep it accurate to where my weight will be when I compete. As far as being lean and toned, uh, I guess I'll have to get abs back. Fortunately, the one benefit about having skinny boy genetics is you can get abs back in like two weeks. Um, but honestly, guys, I have no motivation to get shredded and join Team Shreds. Um, not the supplement company, you know, like just the shredded people in life. I have no motivation to join uh, the shredded life again unless I'm doing it while juicing. Because honestly, when you shred down as, as a legitimate natural athlete, it just means you look sucked up and like you don't even lift if you're wearing a t-shirt. All of, you know, those awesome looking fitness guys who look natural, but they just stay full and aesthetic looking, they're not natural. I mean, I'm not going to name names, call anybody out because that could actually be legal issues, but um, I am in the industry. I'm friends with a lot of people. I work with a lot of people, uh, talk to a lot of people, and um, I know specific stacks of what some of these proclaimed natural fitness uh, physique guys are actually on. So case in point, not trying to knock people who are using stuff here, 
my whole thing is, unless I'm using, I don't really want to get down to super shredded again because it just makes me look tiny and deflated as a natural athlete. That's my little mentality on being uh, uh, lean or shredded, I should say. I don't mind being lean, but shredded. And that's coming from my 104-pound skinny boy uh, beginnings that I do not want to return to. It's a, you can call it a little bit of body dysmorphia if you want to, but I like, I like keeping the whole fluffy look. Plus, when people meet me, they actually tell me that I don't look quite as fluffy in real life as I do on camera, so I guess I'm doing something all right. So I'll be sticking with my Ray-Bans from now on. I see why Brandon Campbell sold me these. These are mediums, which is my size. This is as far as I can get this one up. And this one, I couldn't even get it all the way up properly. I folded it, rolled it. My hands are more sore now than they've been after doing the heaviest deadlifts. I physically cannot get these anymore up. I struggled to get them up at Brandon's house in that vlog last week, but my legs were completely dry because I wasn't training. I did one warm-up set, just enough to get my skin just a little misty from sweat. Completely stuck, cannot get them on. Don't have my Ray-Bans here. So I'm going in raw. I haven't even squatted yet, and I have sweat dripping from me. My shirt's drenched. This is just from trying to pull these things up my legs, and my fingers are already sore. This is pathetic. Damn. So, sticking with the Ray-Bans, for sure, because these, these SVD sleeves, too tight. And they're mediums, which is my size. I have small joints. This is the one time I actually wish I didn't have good calves. Today was not my day, guys. Today was one of those workouts that you normally don't want to ever think about, go through, and especially show the internet. And most YouTubers I know would not upload a bad workout like this, but honestly, guys, my channel on top of, you know, if I can motivate you, awesome. If you can learn something from me, that's amazing. But the real objective of my channel has always been just to give you guys something to relate to. Because I know not everybody's like-minded. It's not every day you get to lift with another serious lifter. So if you can at least track your progression with me via YouTube and relate to me, that's the main goal of my channel. Give you guys something to relate to. Another fellow lifter growing in the sport and the game. So part of relating is seeing the good with the bad. Because everybody has a bad workout. Not everybody shows it. Here's my bad workout. The first set, I miscounted. That just goes to show how mentally thrown off I was. And this set, you see I'm not even breaking depth. And my hips are shooting up. The form's all off. Today was just a mess, both physically and mentally. And I found over the years of training, this is routine for me. Every time I come back after taking a week off. Some people feel refreshed after a week off, but it always throws me out of my groove and I always have a bad time getting back into it. Watch this set. So this is where I both mentally and physically hit a brick wall. Watch how bad this third set goes. I'll explain what happened in a second. Just watch for a minute. This is a disaster. So in case you didn't see that, what actually happened is that was both mental and physical fail. The first time I unracked the weight, I did not get under the bar tight enough at all. My technique was just not there. That's a mental fail. So I re-racked it, took a breather for a second, got back under it for my attempt number two. Upon attempt number two, I did my first rep as you guys saw and it went up nice and fine. But at the very top of the rep, I then lost my balance and stumbled backwards into the power rack. I then realized my pegs were set way too high. Again, today just was not my day, guys. <laughs> Both mentally and physically, I was failing. So I decided to try it one more time, thinking I could mentally just push through this wall. I did consider dropping the weight a little bit, but... Honestly, guys, I know my body. I know how I respond to training. I've been doing it long enough now. I knew it wasn't really a matter of the weight or just being uh, too heavy for me. It was quite simply just my first day back from a week off. And for whatever reason, I've just never had good training days when I come back after a week off. It totally just relaxes my body, my CNS. Everything just gets way too thrown out of rhythm. And I never have a good workout the first day back. I knew that. I accepted that. So there's two things you can do. You can either drop the weight 
and just settle for a lighter workout if the day's not going well for you. Or you can just cut your losses and cut it short like I did. So I decided to preserve my strength and energy for the rest of the week. I knew I'd be better and back on my game again in the next few days once I got back into the rhythm of working out. And I decided to call it a day, cut it short. I did two quick sets of lightweight deadlifts beltless, and that was it. <laughs> to add injury to insult, literally, uh, I dropped a 45-pound plate on my big toe. Don't worry. It didn't do anything serious. I'm fine. I'm still walking. I'm still squatting. I'll be good. But, needless to say, it's freaking annoying. <laughs> so today wasn't one of my best days. Definitely not my most profound video, but I wanted to show you guys that uh, you're not alone if you have a bad workout. It happens to everybody. So all you got to do is just uh, attack it accordingly the day of and then just continue moving forward from there. So, you know, tomorrow will hopefully be a better day. And then uh, once we're back into the groove, it'll be back to great workouts. So the next squat workout I have, I guarantee it'll be a great one. Also, guys, yes, I am aware I did see that there over 2,000 likes on the Max Tuning collaboration video, and I did say if I got over 2,000 likes, I would shave my head. So I will do that. Uh, today is Monday. Uh, I'm probably going to have to wait until this weekend to do it because I don't have any clippers of my own, so this weekend I can like swing down by my parents' house and grab them, unless I can get a friend to do it for me. But yeah, don't worry. My head will be buzzed <laughs> by next week for sure. Uh, you guys are killing me here. In fact, my girlfriend just texted me back. I told her. She's not happy. She's not happy. So if I go single from you guys, because I had to buzz my head.